Hello fellow engineers and welcome to another video on my channel. You may have seen this from that video. So today let's have an exact tutorial about the WASD converter. And as usual, right after the intro. This video is a complete tutorial about everything from how to build it to how to set up and also a use case as an example. After all of that, you should keep on watching because there will be some information about uh, future video projects and some builds I'm working on. Let's start with a base plate of 3x6 with another block row of 1x3 on one end of it and another two stacks of 1 by 2 on the other. Next we are adding some batteries to power it up and also a couple of 1 by 1 wheel suspensions for the input to our converter. Also we need two basic rotors stacked like this facing the left wheel suspension. After adding a control panel, we have to turn down the rotor head distance of both rotors. After deleting the wheel of the left suspension, we get enough space for adding two more important blocks onto the rotors. The first one is just a spacer, so I choose the round interior block for that. The second one needs to be a magnetic plate. And after adding that, we can re-add the missing wheel in the control panel. Now we need four sensors placed like this, one for each key of WASD. Last couple of parts to add are these four armor plates as trigger flags for W and S. Before getting into the setup, there's uh, one step left, and that is lining up the mechanical parts correctly. Therefore, the wheel offset of the left suspension has to be set to zero. So now the wheel and the magnetic plate are lining up perfectly, and the rotor head distance can be pushed out again until the magnetic plate attaches to the wheel. And the second suspension has to be set to wheel offset zero as well. Now, first thing we need to do for the setup is to activate the visibility of the sensor fields. Just in case not everyone watching this video knows about how to do this, here's a short guide. For everyone else, you may skip this part or use that couple of seconds to like, subscribe, and Leave a comment. For activating visibility of sensor fields, we have to enter the terminal of our character, click on Info and enable Show Sensor Field Range. Also, we need to enter the terminal of our grid, select all sensors and enable Show on HUD. After that, all sensor fields will show up like these little gray boxes, seeming like holograms. For a proper setup, we also have to do some renaming and here's what I recommend to name the parts. The suspensions are designated input WS and input AD and the sensors are sensor W, A, S and D. Renaming the rotors and the magnetic plate is not necessary. When taking a look into the terminal, it should look like this. For now, I have hidden all other parts that are not necessary yet to get a better overview. Let's take a look into the settings of input AD. Steering has to be turned on, propulsion, brake, parking brake, invert steering, invert propulsion, should be turned off. Steering angle should be at 25 degrees, power the lowest, strength the highest, high offset still zero, friction zero and all others to zero. Input WS. 
steering turned off, propulsion on, brake, parking brake, inward steering and inward propulsion turned off. High offset, again, zero power and strength 100%, friction zero, speed unlimited and steering override and propulsion override zero. Let's take a look into the presets of the sensors. The dimensions uh, should be turned down to the lowest except um, the front extent. This should be at 0 0.3 meters for better visibility uh, when adjusting it later. For all the other settings, detect small, subgrid, owner and friendly have to be turned on. The two rotors we have installed are intended to reset the input WS suspension after it has turned and you release the keys. Both rotors have inertia tensor and rotor lock turned off and the torque put to 5.0 kN. The first rotor needs a lower limit of 0 and an upper limit of 12 degrees and a velocity of minus 60 rpm. And the second rotor needs an upper limit of 0 and a lower limit of minus 12 degrees and a velocity of plus 60 rpm. The result is the input WS suspension to be limited in turning and reset permanently. Last thing to do to make it work is the final adjustment of the sensor fields. To make this work out as expected, we have to double check the placement of the sensors, including the orientation of these little indicator fields to the outside. If everything is built and set up the correct way, we can use the following parameters for the sensors. Starting with the sensors A and D, both get a top extent of 0.25 and the front extent from the preset of 0.3 stays as it is. Sensor S gets a right extent of 0.2 and a front extent of 0.55. And sensor W gets a left extent of 0.2 and a front extent of 0.55. Now finally we got a functioning WASD converter. As you can see, each sensor gets triggered correctly by pressing and releasing the WASD on your keyboard. Just in case you're asking what this can be useful for, here's a first little example to show that. Why not having some dynamic control over your overlights for having braking lights or even some direction indicators? Or how about using timer blocks as relays and build some active thruster flaps or something like a crane or a sky lift or maybe using it for subgrid thruster control without a script. But that is a whole nother story for another tutorial. Or maybe to leave it as the challenge you have to solve now. Speaking of challenges and subgrids, here's a short sneak peek into my current project. This is a very early phase of the build of a ship called Crusader E1 Spirit. It is a replica of a just announced chip for Star Citizen and I'm pretty optimistic to make it available for space engineers long before it launches in Star Citizen itself. Okay, what else? Um... Oh yeah, are you familiar with that?
yes, that is content from the creator Zio CMF. This guy is not only great at building survival ready replicas of famous ships, he also creates amazing cinematic scenes in Space Engineers. So I'm very proud to announce a cooperation with him, uh, which already let me get my hands on some of these kinds of scenes uh, for creating epic cinematic videos for the next couple of weeks. But not within the next week, because this is the week I will visit Keen Software House in Prague. I'm very excited about that trip and pretty determined to bring home some interesting footage. As usual, last thing for today, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to go further, I have activated super thanks now. Any income will be put into new equipment and better and more content for you. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.